Hello everybody, welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and today I want to walk you through uh, something that I rarely do, um, but that was actually sort of amazingly effective. So this was a reading that I received um, from a friend and actually sort of in a group setting. Um, we had some friends over for dinner a few months back and the subject of tarot came up and I didn't realize that a couple of my friends I'm um, actually quite interested in tarot and that one of them had studied a bit and read in the past. Um, and so we decided to kind of uh, trade off tarot readings. And this was the one that my friend did for me. So um, it's uh, something that's related to the channel. Uh, my question was about uh, YouTube. And so I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, but my friend is a very traditional kind of tarot reader. So he wanted to use the Rider Waite Smith deck, which I rarely actually reach for to use. Um, and he wanted to use the Celtic cross. So, and I, I don't think I've ever given a Celtic cross reading maybe since I was in college and was just sort of using a book, um, to try to work my way through it. But here's the thing, uh, with this reading I have a new appreciation for the Celtic Cross and I think it's particularly good for answering how questions. So how do I move through this situation or how do I make some progress towards this goal? Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now I have not laid this out in the traditional Celtic Cross pattern because it does not fit well. Um, on the screen. I've kind of moved the cards around. So I'll point out which positions are which as we go through this. Um, but the question was, how do I get more engaged followers on my tarot YouTube channel? So how do I get more engaged followers on this space? Um, not just uh, quantity of followers or subscribers, but uh, quality ones that will talk to me in the comments and, you know, exchange ideas with me. That's really why I'm here. That's always been the goal of this channel. And so um, I was noticing my numbers were, you know, sort of steadily going up, but I really wanted to have some more engagement with folks. And so that's why I asked this question. So card number one is the Queen of Pentacles. And this would be representing the question or myself in this situation. So, you know, here's, uh, here's Sarah uh, in this seat, nurturing this project, you know, nurturing this thing that she's put time and investment into. And then the second position uh, came up as the King of Cups, the, the challenge to the goal of getting more engaged followers. And that was the King of Cups. Um, which immediately resonated with me. I think my friend was struggling a little bit with how this personality type or this um, kind of attitude might be a challenge. But for me, it made perfect sense because I, when I'm in public, whether that's at my job or whether that's on YouTube, um, when I'm putting content out and I don't know who might be watching it, I tend to be very sort of business-like, not very emotional, um, I don't want to share too much personal information. You know, I'm pretty guarded. And I think that that has actually um, inhibited some some certain amount of engagement on the channel. Uh, maybe people see me more in a kind of a teacherly role or more authoritative than I'm trying to come across. Um, or maybe I'm just, you know, not really reaching people on kind of an emotional level. Um, so I think feeling blocked in a in a king of cups capacity not feeling like i'm um you know fully engaging my emotional intelligence or engaging my emotional side um makes sense to me in this context holding myself back essentially so then in the third position we had the sun um, and this uh according to my friend represented the distant past so the foundation of the question or, you know, the first ideas. Well, the, you know, the first ideas I had for this YouTube channel um, were to, you know, bring a sense of exploration and enjoyment and shining a spotlight, not on myself, but on, on the subject of tarot and, you know, connecting with people. Um, so that made sense in that position. That was my original goal for this. And then in uh, position number four, the page of pentacles represented the recent past. And that also makes sense. Um, you know, the, the idea behind the name of this channel, Water Child Tarot, is that I remain kind of a student and I keep going with that beginner mindset, even though I'm learning along the way. 
I'm not trying to pass myself off as an authority. I'm, I'm trying to explore and learn along with everybody. And then in card number the five position, we had death, um, which is interesting to me. This is the, the only time, at least in the recent past, I'll have to go back and look, um, that I've had a death card in a reading. So it's interesting that it came up in this position um, of the coming future. And that said to me that I have to give up old old ways of presenting myself on YouTube, old ways of, you know, maybe format or, um, you know, this kind of stuckness. I need to move on from it. And I have to embrace change. Um, I don't always read the death card as a transformation. I think a lot of people shy away from the concept of something ceasing to be. Um, but in this case, this kind of reticence and this kind of protectiveness um, does need to cease in order for me to open up and connect with people. In the sixth position, we have the Eight of Wands, and that's the AIM card. So what are my, what are my goals? And this is where the Celtic Cross, I think, is weird because it tries to answer things that you already know the answer to. Like, I know what my goal is. My goal is in the question. But, you know, to, to do it in a coordinated and a swift manner, I would say, um, this card does make sense. So to, to really be thoughtful and to be um, methodical about taking this approach, but also wanting to see some, some action, some real change, and so not holding back um, from this letting go. Um, so putting some energy into this, this sense of change and transformation in the way that I'm presenting my channel or the kinds of content that I'm putting out there. Um, in the number seven position, we have the hanged man, and this represents my relationship to the question. So we wrote down um, a prompt, what am I sacrificing to the channel? A good uh, question to ask too. It's like in order to open up, I have to sacrifice some of my privacy. I have to sacrifice some of my sense of, um, you know, remaining anonymous or remaining not emotionally engaged. Um, I can't just be, you know, another YouTuber if I want people to genuinely enjoy uh, my content or distinguish my content from maybe other things that they are drawn to watch. Um, I. A lot of people that I watch, for example, I do connect with them on an emotional level. Um, I connect with them because I enjoy their personality. So having to bring my personality in this means sacrificing some of that distance that I've, that I've kind of cultivated up to this point. And then, oops, I just noticed, okay, these are out of position, sorry. So in this position, which is the number eight position, uh, the Four of Pentacles representing internal factors, you know, this again talks, it sort of relates to this hanged man question of what do I have to give up? I have to give up this idea of I'm just going to hold everything to myself. You know, I'm going to hold all of my personality, my emotions, um, even my investment in this channel. I'm just going to kind of hold it close to my chest and not be as open. So this you know, all of these cards kind of talk together about that. In the nine position, we have the six of wands. So this would be external factors and embracing that shared enthusiasm. So I've received nice comments on previous videos where people say, you know, they do enjoy my personality or they like my content or whatever. And so just kind of, you know, being present for those kind of uh, positive encouragements and, and going ahead and embracing that um, and not being afraid of attention, you know, not being afraid of people saying things like that or um, drawing attention to me. You know, if I do want more engaged followers, that's going to be more attention. And so becoming comfortable with that. And then card number 10, and it's the star and sort of what, you know, what more perfect way to kind of round this out. It's like, if I follow all this advice about um, opening up my emotions and grounding myself in my motivations of what I started with the channel, but maybe changing some of the format, changing up some of the content to make it a little bit more personal, and doing that in a, in a coordinated but quick manner, letting go of some of my hang-ups and some of my shyness about doing this, and then embracing the audience, I'll become more of a star, right? More, more known on YouTube. Um, and it's never been about being famous uh, to me, but it has um, always been about engagement. You know, I, I want more people here 
um, not just be able to say, oh, I have this or that number, but to be able to have broader conversations or conversations with people from many different kinds of backgrounds or experiences. Um, so, you know, if I do all of these things, then, then that will lead to the outcome that I want, um, which is sort of more exposure, you know, she's naked. Um, I'm not going to get naked on my channel, don't worry. Uh, but, you know, being, being out there um, and, and being uh, more involved, I guess, in the community is, is kind of what this outcome card says to me. I can say in terms of accuracy, um, this is also a very accurate reading because this was one that we did several months ago and since that time I've started to do more live videos, I've started to be a little faster at responding to comments, um, and I've started to include more personal content, you know, in my monthly updates where I talk about other hobbies or, you know, things that's, that are going on in my personal life, and that has generated a lot of engagement, which is exactly what I was going for. Um, and, you know, Incidentally, the subscriber count has gone up uh, kind of gradually and regularly as well, um, which was not so much my, my goal, but again, that engagement piece has certainly blossomed since I followed the advice of this reading. You know, that was a great reading and it really did um, kind of surprise me uh, because again, I kind of written off the Celtic cross as being clunky and, you know, sort of having too many different moving parts. So I'll admit that when I first sat down for this reading and asked this question, and then my, you know, my friend was like, nope, we have to use RWS and we have to use this spread. I was kind of like, okay, but you know, in this, in this context and with this question, this kind of how do I reach this goal or how do I work on this goal even, it was a great reading and it totally made sense. Um, and, the, and the questions were good. And I, so I think that's my takeaway here is the Celtic cross as with any spread, you want to make sure that the 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 sub parts, the the positions or the sub questions within the spread address the question. And as long as that's true, you can get an effective reading. That was a great reminder as well. So uh, tell me what you thought of this. Um, I'm not necessarily asking you to critique the reading. I think it's you know pretty clear and pretty straightforward, but. What do you think of the Celtic cross? Do you use it? Do you hate it? Um, <laughs> have you written it off like I did? You know, uh, does seeing an example like this make you want to try it again for certain kinds of questions? Um, what kinds of questions do you think it's well suited for? Um, let me know what you think. And as always, thank you for being here. I appreciate your time and your attention. And I'll talk to you very soon.